Hey y'all, welcome back to the ranch. I'm Jared Paul, and today is the big one year beard anniversary. Um, so I haven't shaved for one year. I haven't touched it, clipped it, nipped it, nothing. Um, so today we're going to take a look at pruning this bad boy back for some ramification. And I'm going to give you the November update for the uh, ranch tour. So that's all coming up on today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai. All right, so update time. Got the lawn all done, all the leaves and grass got all mulched up and they got added to that tree bed. So, you know, that tree bed that's gonna have maples, um, oaks and walnuts, maybe even some pines. It is all set. I've got three bags of lime I'm gonna drop on there today. And then that thing is gonna be good to uh, throw the seeds on top of and get them cold stratified for the winter. All right, let's get inside, it's nasty out here. All right, Chelsea, here we have the plant room set up for the winter season. Um, I did tropical corners, you know, a bunch of different philodendrons and tropical varieties like that. Um, of course, my queen of the night uh, cactus, <clears throat> sago palm from South Carolina, just a bunch of cool stuff. As the main fixtures, I haven't brought in this annual, see if we could, you know, get it to survive the winter. Anyways, this room is, uh, yes, predominantly tropicals and then citrus. Pretty jammed in tightly. Um, well, what are you going to do? I got a lot of trees. <laughs> so it has been snowing all day, on and off. So I brought a little space heater in here um, because the radiator just gets too hot and it dries everything out over there. So I don't like to use that. So I finally got this guy in. And yes, it looks like a cluttered mess right now, but it's really turning out the way I want it. I want it to be just a completely, completely full forest um, and then have a, flu a few blue spruce coming out front. Um, so I'm excited where this thing's going. So we have the blue spruce, some uh, Connecticut red pine, and then some arborvitae back there, some Thuja occidentalis. So yeah, those are in. Um, one guy, I hope he went dormant and didn't just wither up and die on me. One of my favorite trees, the macadamia nut. I mean, it went south quickly. <laughs> uh, I hate that. I've lost some lost some trees. You saw those kiwis earlier, those vines. I haven't had good luck with vines coming back after a pruning or going inside to outside and vice versa. Um, you see the Delonyx rosea is looking nice. The bobabs, Korean birch. You know, growth, growth has definitely slowed. Of course, I trip over it. Growth has definitely slowed um, here in Northwest New Um This is a successful little project I have going on, this pathos. I've got some eye hooks going up above the cambita tree, so that's going to crawl around. And then same thing in the ceiling. Coming up over to this little candelabra, wall mount one. I'm going to have some go out to the sides and then some come down around this painting or on that painting. And then even up above the laundry and dryer door. So yeah, I'm psyched about that. So moving into here, I moved um, I moved one of those big round uh, chairs into the other room to make room for this table. And I was able to fit a lot of the bigger uh, terracotta plot, pots on there with all the um, hardy junipers, white cedar, um, blue spruce, Pinus aristata, which is the bristlecone pine um, from the Rocky Mountains. These are those juniper horizontalis. You know, I did one nice and tight. My first attempt at dead wood. It's not that thick or impressive or anything, but it was cool. Uh, and then we left. I think this was Laura left it really full. And then this was the third one. So those are in their, you know, their training phase. They're pretty cool. Um, this other juniper over here is doing really well. I took out a branch since the last video. That just wasn't looking good. It was coming out this way. So I'm really digging it. And then extended out this table because 
you know, we either eat at the kitchen counter or outside or in front of the TV. So we don't really use a kitchen table. So this was great for doing all these guys. A lot of the Japanese Elkovas. Um, I showed you this was in the video or is in the next video that I'll be releasing. Uh, it's a kiwi. And, you know, I don't know if it's in a dormancy phase or if it just died. I don't know. Pencil cactus hasn't moved, but I just surrounded it with a bunch of different cool trees. Brought in that white pine that I had yamadoried, roots over rock. So that's still set up high in soil so that those roots can get set up. Um, black locust, really high maintenance, but really, really pretty. And there's an avocado that grew up in there. I have some lemon scented gums in here. And this is just a really cool, uh, I think it's a philodendron of some type. Over here, another black locust. They just get attacked by bugs all the time. It's like, it was not one, it's another. This is a huge tub of succulent that have just lasted over a couple of years now. So I'm liking that. I've got some more of the lemon scented gums over here. This is the... A rock trumpet vine. So I guess that's the only vine I've had success with. One of these avocados that I had pruned grew two branches and they are both really getting large now. So I'll have to figure out something to do with that. This is my dominant cherimoya. That won't be fruit bearing for a couple of years, but I'm going to let that guy grow. Got some more avocados splitting down here. What had happened was they sprouted up a couple, then got attacked by bugs. And then it just like, kept breaking off. So it really got miniaturized early. I was impressed that it kept coming back. This is a cutting. I don't, it's still green. So I leave it, but no leaves have come out. And it's really been there a while. Normal setup over here. All right. So I had two Schifflera just wither up and die that were in this pot. So I still have the one Schifflera cutting, but I added two pencil cactus cuttings. And... They're really leggy, so I'll probably trim them back hard, but let's let them get established first. A few blue jacaranda. They come back nice from a nice hard prune. It was either late September, early October. This is my little cutting tray. We got some African bobabs to take. I believe these are avocados or cherimoya. Not 100% positive. We'll wait for them to grow up a little bit. Another one over here. This is a Korean birch cutting. I'm really surprised that one stayed. This guy has seen better days. The mimosa that I got for the rain tree, the Brazilian rain tree for my birthday. I didn't even notice it, but it got some spider mites. So, anyways, Japanese alcova. Here's my arching fig. It's looking really nice. All the arches are getting really established and then it's growing really nice and tall. I don't think I'm going to do any more arches into the soil. I'm just going to let these ones thicken up and then I'll build branching off of that. Lemon scented gum or the elite eucalyptus. Here's a trio of them. They're growing nice and tall. They really grow long and thin and I've rushed pruning them before and they've died. So I'm just going to leave them be for the winter. We got that African Bobab trio. They all came back nice and full, getting some good branching on those. Here's that blue jacaranda with twists and turns. And everything that I kept seems to be branching out again, so I'm pleased with that. This was a blue jacaranda grouping of four. Two died, and these other two don't even look that good, so I might have to just repot that and see if... Somehow they got root bound, even though they were very young. I've been really hesitant to prune up this Norfolk Island pine grouping that I have because I, I just haven't looked up how you prune them and how they come back if they branch or, you know, pines are tricky. I don't know if this is classified more of a pine or like it'll react like a tropical. So I'll have to do my research. Over here, we still have a couple poinsettias. That lasted from last Christmas, so those are going to be cool. I'm going to throw them in the dark like December 1st because then I believe they'll redden up. We've got 
my mango tree grown from a seed. I had two, one died, withered up and died. I really had a rough year with things just out of nowhere dying. Uh, banana passion fruit, this is a little aloe plant Laura grew from seed. It was a gift from her sister. Yo, yo, where you at? Bonsai Rebellion. Check it out, the Japanese Zelkova. Just pruned it up. I'm loving this branching. This tree turns one from a seed on, on December 1st. So it was really cool. See all that branching already? Such a young tree. So if you don't have any of these, they really, they've given me a lot of confidence in pruning and having things grow back the way you want them. Even this little guy, I thought it had died off. It was a little twig, but now it's sprouting a few, a few branches. So that's cool. Here we have the downstairs basement greenhouse. Uh, the final setup. So I have these full spectrum grow lights in four different spaces around. And I have made little posses here around the immediate area. So this is like blueberries and my trident maples over here. Any maples. Um, over here there are raspberries, some birches, but mainly baby pines. Oh, and there's a fig. Um... Over here, I have my Japanese fantail willows and my redwoods, more birches, blackberries, hydrangea. Yeah. Over here, this is just a random section. See some birches. And then from my last seed video, we've got the setup on these nice warming seed mats. And this is just a standard um, grow light. It is not one of these full spectrum LEDs. All right. All right. Hasn't been pruned in one year exactly. Hmm. All right, perfect. Here's to the second year. All right, y'all. So that's going to do it for us today here at the ranch. I really appreciate you stopping by. If you enjoyed today's video and the update, if you would go ahead and give me a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, I promise there'll be a lot more fun videos to see. Have a great day, y'all.